Uh, I know that we are in the developers stream of the conference, but don't worry, I won't uh, get very, well, I, w I won't go very deep into the technical details as I feel this topic of unique and unexpected ways in which Moodle can be used more as a space to like, arouse your curiosity and encourage you to imagine your own scenarios or other scenarios where a Moodle-based platform could fit your own um, needs or ideas. Well, that being said, uh, my name is Kepa Urcelay, and there is my colleague Inigo. <laughs> Say hello. And we are both um, analysts, developers, and also administrators for the whole learning environment, uh, learning management uh, system environment for the University of Mondragon. And we are here. Oops, sorry. And we are here to uh, show you some of the most interesting things or features that we have worked on um, to build the human-centered design facility tool. Well, this platform, it's, um, it's, uh, well, this platform is the result of a project driven by the Design Innovation Center of Mondragon and, well, worked in collaboration with the development department of the university also and financed by the Gipuzkoa Provincial Council. Well, I'm sure that most of you have heard about this term, the human-centered design, but for those who not, I will explain briefly and you will understand how important this can be for any product, um, solution or service design process. Well, basically, it is a problem-solving technique, as I said before, that puts people in the center of these development processes to create solutions that are um, really, um, really tailored with the audience to which they give answer. When I say people, um, I want to say uh, people from the whole company ecosystem. I'm talking about stakeholders, I'm talking about uh, agents. So at the end, the goal is to, to create um, or better than to create, to keep in mind in every moment of the, or in every stage of the process, all the user wants, pain points, and also preferences. So, our platforms, sorry, this, well, our platform's aim is to, to facilitate or to help companies to incorporate this philosophy. And for that, we have used the whole learning management system environment and tools also that Moodle gives us. And we have built a system that, that, that is able to guide the user through this problem solving process. Well, a few comments about the platform in general. We are running, we are running Moodle 3.11 with the Moodle theme move, and also making the whole site multilingual with the filter multilang2 plugin. Apart from that, as a first step, once the, um, once the user creates his own account, he will land into the homepage. It's a very easy homepage, just built by uh, level modules and styled by HTML and CCS. But apart from that, we have also used the local, uh, local boost navigation plugin to clean a little bit this left side menu in favor of a new navbar menu that we have built in the top side of, the, of our platform. There is where the main sections of our system or applications are. I'm going to now to pass through one of those that for me is the most important one and where more tricks or patches we have developed. And it's the one, well, there is, it is in Spanish, but in English will be problems, um, because there is where the user starts his own problem or his own project solving process. Well, it's uh, important to understand that for us, each problem or each project that the user wants to develop is a middle course. And we wanted to be, or, or we wanted the users to be able to create them on demand. So we patched the local course template plugin to, to give that, that possibility to them. Obviously, 
um, using a template that we have already defined and, and made. That template, or in that template course, is where all the magic happens because, um, well, you will see that we have used also format tiles to format the course. And, and I say that here is where the magic happens because uh, this user that is going to solve his problem or he is, is going to develop his project or whatever, he's going to pass or he's going to need to pass through all of the uh, stages of the process that for us are Moodle course sections. Um, this, progress, this progress is going to be um, uh, evaluated in a value that we call the HTD level that uh, there in the left side of your screen. And it is a value that is stored in the course custom fields and also shown to the user um, through this HTML block and using also the generico, the generico plugin. Well, as I said before, uh, this, user, this user is going to pass through all of the stages of, uh, of every development. You will, um, you will understand these terms. And finally, he's going to have like a planning report in a PDF file using this download content feature. That's a Moodle core uh, feature. We use that only for base. You, well, I'm not going to be able to show it to you as I'm time limited, but, by, but we have changed it uh, completely, that feature. But well, as a base, it was very helpful for us. At the end, this report, this planning report is going to be formed or, yes, it's formed by smaller files uh, that are amended while the user selects which tools to use in each stage of the process. So these ones are Moodle pages for us and I will, and I will explain uh, now how they are shown or how they are selected or how they are suggested to this, to this user. Well, for, for these suggestions, we need to work with different inputs. There are some of them, they are simple parameters, but other ones, they are more, more difficult or tricky. Well, the first one, it's an it's easy one, the process or the stage of the process. They are all like completion and restriction rules. But the second one gets a little bit more complicated. <laughs> well, I said before that for us, a human-centered design tool, it's um, a page, a, mo a page module type. And it's shown to the user by these group access restrictions. And to know in which groups to enroll the user, this is all that the system has to do, uh, we use the mod choice group. It's a little bit confusing to, uh, to, sorry, to mix this um, group and tools, but we have like a little, mat well, it's not, <laughs> it's so huge, it's quite huge. We have a matrix that links all of them. So once the user selects which group to be enrolled, then the system will show for him the certain uh, HCD tool. We have this agent involvement input in the, in the feedback that the user uh, answers. And this feedback is it's also um, filled by the agents that he will enter in the, first, in the first step where he defines all the stakeholders. Apart from this, if a user doesn't, wants to, doesn't want to go through all this process, all this development process, he has another section in the platform called the tools where he can find uh, like a library, library where to filter, search, or just consult whatever, whatever he wants or all the pro tips that we have for him. Well, I really also wanted to end the presentation with these plugins or future overview as it gets some clue of how rich the, how rich the collaboration between 
how can I say, all of us, I mean, Middle HQ, also plugin contributors and every one of us, how Rich made our, our community, our education community in general. So I wanted to say thank you also to all those contributors that contribute to these old plugins that we use, and they are more, but I'm, maybe if you have some questions, you will discover more plugins that we have touched or used and for what. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have some time for questions. Anybody with a question, you can raise your hand and they'll bring you a mic. Over here. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify, when you say you've patched these plugins, do you mean that you've made local changes to them, or are these changes you've contributed back to the original developers? No, no, we call them patches. It's not, maybe it's not the best term for them. They are modifications that we made by, uh, for our own site. They are not, not public. Is there any scope for actually, if they were useful changes, is there any scope for actually giving them back to the original developers so well, the developers they can are, There are a lot of things that we developed and they were, that we, we found quite um, useful for the general uh, plugins development as they fix some... At the end, we, we, go very, we, we went very deep in all of the, the plugins that we used. So we saw some things that... Yes, as you said, they were useful for the general. Uh, we have already uh, patched some of them for make them work with a multilingual to uh, filter. We've done some parallel requests. Yeah. Well, for example, if if, if anybody has any any uh, question, uh, you see there the local auto group plugin. Uh, there is an interesting that thing that we made with with it because we let the users to, uh, to set which, uh, t to which team or, or to which company they, they, they or from where, for where they, they are coming to our platform. So after, in a forum course, they, they, group, they group them together and using the forum group uh, feature or functionality, they have their space to communicate among their company or teams.